Hey everyone, welcome back to this Tosca playlist. And we have been talking about the API testing using the Tosca API scan and Tosca commander. Now, this is a series of videos on API testing. And this is the fourth part uh, in this particular series. So if you have not watched the previous uh, parts on this particular uh, series, then I would recommend you to go back and uh, watch all the three videos uh, prior to this so that you can follow along uh, what I'm talking on, on this particular video, okay? So uh, we have already seen, uh, we have been using this uh, pet API to add some pets uh, and then get uh, the new pet, which we have added using the ID and then um, to delete that a new pet from the API, right? So these are the three requests which we have scanned. And then when uh, we have uh, imported it to uh, our project uh, under this particular component folder called API testing. And then all the modules and test cases were already generated by Tosca. And then uh, in the last session, we also saw uh, how we can change or add different business parameters like module attributes. And then we can also do some verifications like the status code um, and also the name which we have added uh, in the request, right? And that same name we are verifying in the response. So these two verifications, uh, we have seen how we can do this by adding business parameters. And then uh, in the test case, we can do the verification, right? Now the next step is to uh, basically execute the get request and the delete request. But the only problem right now is we need a pet ID in order to process this request because it requires this parameter which we need to pass, which is the pet ID. And this pet ID is generated only after we send the post request, right? Where we are adding a new pet. So once it is added and then in the response, we are getting back the ID. So we need to capture that particular ID which is being returned by uh, the response. And then we need to pass uh, that as a parameter into our get request and delete request, right? So that's what we want to do. So uh, if I look at uh, the post uh, add pet response, okay? And here uh, in the technical view, you can see that there is a ID. Okay, this is uh, what it is returning. So once we send the post request, this will be returned in the response. And this is what we want to capture and we want to buffer it so that it will be stored in some variable and then we can use it um, as a parameter in all the other requests where it is required, okay? So uh, the first thing which we need to do is uh, we need to uh, add this as a business parameter. So I'm going to select this and I'm going to click on add. So now it is the ID is a module attribute here, which is like a business parameter. So it will be available um, in our test case as well, right? Also um, in the request, right? For this uh, delete and get request, we also need to add the pet ID, okay? Because also the delete request requires uh, API key. So both of these parameters uh, should be added, okay? So I'm going to add this here. And then uh, in the get request, I'm going to add the pet ID. So these are the three uh, module attributes, uh, one for get request, two for delete, which we require, okay? And uh, then uh, let's come back here. And so here uh, we have got the ID, so in the response. And what we want to do as we want to basically store it somewhere so that we can access it later on, right? And the best way uh, is to use the buffer, right? So buffer uh, we can use in the action mode. So we are going to buffer the value which is returned from the ID, okay? So I'm going to give it uh, the action mode buffer and then here I'm going to give it uh, basically a buffer name right, where this particular ID will be stored, okay? So um, let me call it pet ID, okay? And maybe I can rename this as B underscore pet ID. So this is my buffer on value or the buffer name where this value will be stored. Um, and once this is done, 
then we can come here uh, in the delete request the api key basically will remain same right so it is not changing you can even convert this into a configuration parameter if you don't want to uh, write it directly here right and then a pet id here uh, we are going to use the buffer value okay so here b and then uh, b underscore pet id okay so this will be um, our buffered value which uh, we'll be using and same for the get request again i uh, will be using the buffer value okay so b um, b underscore pet id okay so this is how uh, you can basically um, pass different values okay which you are getting from a response uh, you can basically filter out those values and you can store it somewhere like a buffer a buffer value right and then use those values in other request wherever uh, you are uh, requiring those those values right so it is basically a chaining of requests api request right so you are basically creating a chain of api request which basically work um, in a particular sequence because first we need to send the post request then we need to send uh, the get request and then we need to send the delete request right so that will be basically the sequence and for that uh, in order to have these all these test cases in a sequence what we can also do uh, is let's go ahead and rename this uh, all these test cases okay so let's go here and i'm going to call it 01 underscore post request and then 0 to underscore get request and 0 3 underscore delete request right so that we know that okay this is the sequence uh, which we have to execute okay also i'm going to uh, drag it uh, so that it is in the correct sequence so whenever uh, we put it into an execution list okay and we execute that execution list it should be executed in this particular order okay so now uh, first let's see how we can execute it one by one and then maybe we'll put it in execution list and we'll execute it okay so for now let me run this uh, in scratch book and this is going to create a new uh, pet in that particular api okay and you can see it is going to buffer that particular value so this is the id which has been returned and it has been stored in b underscore pet id right so we have that value now and if we go to get request we should be getting that and we'll be using it for the pet id okay so let me go ahead and run this okay so the pet id is okay and uh, we also have uh, the get response now what we could also do is we can verify the response status code for the get request and the delete request so let's go ahead and add them okay so if i go to uh, get response here and uh, i am going to add the status code okay so don't worry about uh, the 404 not found that uh, may have been scanned before uh, i executed this once and it failed okay but uh, we can change that so that's not a problem um and again i need to add this status code into the delete request okay so the minimum uh, verification which you can do for each uh, api request is the status code and apart from this you can also verify other things uh, whatever is being returned um, on your response right so here uh, i am going to select 200 okay and uh, it will be action mode verify similarly for uh, the delete response right uh, i'm going to again select 200 okay and again it is verify okay so let's go ahead and execute this once more just to check if the status code is still uh, the same okay so we have got the status code now and then the delete pet right so let's go ahead and execute this
okay and uh, also this verification was successful so uh, now we have executed all our test cases using the correct values okay which is uh, the pet id which we have created earlier and then we are getting that pet id uh, or getting the pet by that id and then we are deleting that okay so you can do a lot more verifications like once it is deleted again you can uh, do a get pet by id and you should not uh, basically have that so it should be a known failure right because that pet id don't exist so you might get a 404 you can verify that that is something uh, which is a negative test case right so once the pet is deleted it should not be present on uh, the api so you should get a 404 okay so these are these kind of things uh, you can still do but uh, this will be the process right uh, and the last step would be to just create a execution folder here okay so uh, first let me create a execution folder here uh, called pet api and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to drag these three test cases into this execution folder so that it creates an execution list and uh, i can then call it uh, api requests or api messages okay and uh, i should make sure that uh, they are in the correct order so i will just drag it so that first the post request uh, is processed and then the get and then the delete okay and then i can go ahead and execute this and then all the results should be available uh, as an execution list right um, so i can view it directly here all my requests which is basically a request and a response and i'm also verifying the status code here and we can as i said we can do a lot of other verifications as well right so uh, you can see uh, in the log info you can verify uh, what was the value set here okay and uh, the same value was used here so all of these things uh, can be done okay and um, in this way you can basically uh, scan your api messages you can then export it back to your commander you can create your test cases the required modules you can add the module attributes um, as business parameters and then you can use it for verification in your test cases along uh, with buffering other uh, response values which can be used in other requests okay so this is basically a flow of how you can test your apis um, within tosca using the api scan and tosca commander there are lots of other functionalities uh, which we'll talk about uh, in our coming up sessions on this particular topic which is api testing so do tune in uh, into our channel to watch all these new videos uh, if you have not subscribed um, please subscribe so that you get notified about all our new videos if you want to keep learning tosca uh, and all of its different features and functionalities so hope this video was helpful um, and you learned something new today uh, we'll come up with some more videos as i talked about on api testing and other topics so keep watching